In the online fitness space, I'm what's known as a fake natty. Someone notorious for deceiving their audience about the performance-enhancing supplements they've taken. But is this label well-deserved? Well, in this video, I'll be revealing how I was exposed, the monumental shift it caused in my life, and I'll be revealing every unnatural performance-enhancing substance I've ever taken. Because there are some that I have not told you about. It all began in 2018 when the narrative spread that my physique was deteriorating. Now, don't confuse the time periods here. I'm not talking about the muscle I lost during my 40 day fast in 2020. I'm referring to the contrast in my physique from 2016 to 2018, as depicted by Derek from More Plates, More Dates, that was utilized to support the conjecture that I stopped taking anabolic steroids to mitigate my hair loss. But then he can't go back on cycle to get it back because he knows if he goes back on cycle, he's just going to f*** his hair even worse. And although I made a video ambiguously discussing why I lost my gains, I never bluntly and thoroughly articulated how I truly felt. That my loss of muscle was a mentally fabricated bandwagon of the online fitness community. It was essentially one big illusion. Derek utilized a specific photo selection to grossly exaggerate the decline in my physique to construct a story that would maximize viewership. Now, I have no resentment towards Derek. There's a greater systemic issue at play here where people thrive off of the downfall of others to feel better about their own lives. Derek simply gave the audience what they wanted, but just because it's what they wanted does not mean it's true. Derek said that my physique declined at an unprecedented rate in just four to six months. His physique was significantly regressing at a unprecedented rate in the span of what seemed like, you know, like four to six months. Yet the transformation he showcased took place over almost two years. The before picture was unrealistic, taken in a perfectly controlled setting with optimal lighting, optimal angles, and a pump taken with a wide angle lens that significantly distorted my arm. And the after picture was a screenshot from a video in much less flattering circumstances. If he wanted to promote the opposite narrative, he actually could have. You can find before and after photos from the same time periods to convey an improvement in my physique over this time period. Unfortunately, this type of transformation is not notable and it would receive far less views. You see, a physique can look dramatically different by altering specific factors such as camera angles, lighting, and a pump, which is why in 2016, during my peak Omegle physique years, I did a 10 minute transformation, where in literally just 10 minutes, I dramatically altered the appearance of my physique. These two frames are from the exact same day. That's right, this physique is the same physique during the same time period as my renowned Omegle series. You could portray opposite transformation trajectories by selecting different frames from the same day as the before image. From 2016 to 2018, I don't believe I lost significant muscle. I may have been holding on to more body fat at times, which can give the appearance of decreased muscularity, but why would someone as smart as Derek believe that my leanest physique could be perpetually sustainable? That's not practical at all. I also allowed my physique to consistently be seen in far less ideal circumstances rather than showcasing it only under perfect conditions with optimal lighting angles and a pump like in my Omegle videos. Even Derek admits it wasn't my peak physique that was evidence of me being on anabolic steroids. My FFMI has always been within the natural range. It has nothing to do with his peak physique. If he had maintained that forever, it'd be a lot harder to figure out. But Derek's claim that I lost 10 to 15 pounds of lean mass from my cessation of anabolic steroid usage is such a wild claim with damaging implications. So it shocked me that he could make those implications so flippantly all of a sudden loses 10 to 15 pounds of lean mass out of fucking nowhere for no reason. And this fake natty narrative was quite life altering, but possibly for the better. And I'll explain why. It's not gonna seem like it at first. My workout and diet programs stopped selling. 
since steroids were seen as the primary facilitator of my physique, rather than my diet and exercise routines. I was deemed a fraud, and my views, ad revenue, and brand deal opportunities began to diminish. Each month, I watched my revenue dwindle. Paying $3,500 for rent in LA didn't leave me much time. I desperately sought ways to transition my content away from the fitness industry. And although I tried not to show it, the entire fitness community perceiving me as a fake natural was difficult to mentally navigate. So in order to cope, I made it my goal to destroy my ego and become unattached to others' opinions of me. So I created an entire character whose personality revolved around not giving a fuck about what people think. I wanted to rebrand myself. I completed a 40 day fast to promote non-attachment to my physique. I created social anxiety exercises like anti-conditioned expressiveness, where you intentionally break societal norms to overcome your fear of the judgment of others. I even packaged my techniques together in a social anxiety course. I created Prima Sada Yoga, an awkward social anxiety challenge, but also an exercise that promotes actual connection with women rather than superficially attracting them with my body. And at this point, I thought I had succeeded in escaping the fitness industry because I was making over $20,000 a month on OnlyFans doing Prima Sada Yoga with, with girls, the uncensored version. And the crazier and the more free I acted, the more money accumulated. See, during the peak of my eccentric antics on YouTube, it was actually the most successful point in my social media career. And because of this, I was able to recontextualize the prevalence of Derek's narrative about me as positive. At this time, I had absolutely zero intention of returning to the bodybuilding community. I had no sponsors. I had absolutely no incentive to be anything but transparent about my substance utilization. The more open I was, the more views I would receive, and the more it would align with my new branding. And Derek agreed with that. This guy is so, you know, enlightened now, doesn't give a shit about anything or what people think about it. I'm like, I, I was shocked. He hadn't just like made a video that would, that would get tons of views just talking about, you know, what I really did. Wouldn't be that hard. And, you know, people would respect him way more. So I did reveal exactly the compounds that I had taken to Kenny KO after some Prima Sada Yoga, of course. And the most substantial of those substances, MK677. You took a song. It's not a sign. <laughs> All right, growth hormone secretagogue. But Derek didn't believe this, and he doubled down, insisting that I must have taken anabolic steroids that I refused to disclose. That you could not possibly ever convince me that this guy was not saucy in his peak. So what was the justification for continuing to perpetuate such a potentially harmful narrative? The guy's been parading around on YouTube, adamantly claiming he's natural <laughs> multiple times on camera. So like, to me, it was justified in my opinion. Look. I remember claiming I was natural one time back in a 2016 Q&A. If anyone can find more examples, please let me know. But describing my behavior as parading around that I'm natural is such a dramatization of the reality. As soon as I began using any PEDs that the fitness community consensus would dub unnatural, like MK677, I explicitly refrained from ever again claiming natural. And I certainly do not claim natural now. But maybe a valid criticism is that I didn't reveal this to my audience sooner. But Derek contextualized my admission to MK677 and my promotion of naturalness versus unnaturalness as a spectrum as an attempt to finagle my way around revealing the totality of the substances I had taken. I hope that modeling naturalness versus unnaturalness as a spectrum would mitigate drug abuse by promoting a more balanced supplementation approach and discourage the all or nothing mentality that's predicated on the standard dichotomous view of natty or not. Connor Murphy points out there is no natural or not natural. Technically, it's all on a spectrum and he's kind of right. See right now there are two distinct groups, the naturals and the unnaturals. The naturals are attached to their natural label. So they're disincentivized to utilize supplements that are considered unnatural, even if they will holistically benefit their well-being. And the unnaturals may as well abuse drugs because they've already lost their natty card. So there's no identity disincentive at play here. See, the bodybuilding world is in dire need of balance when it comes to substance utilization. So when I came to Thailand and was given the opportunity to spread this message, I took it. I explained this philosophy to Dr. Tony Huge and together we formulated the Natty Plus protocol. 
the protocol that has helped me reacquire my peak physique. It's a regimen that incorporates specific supplements anywhere from a three to a six on the natty or not spectrum at sensible dosages and durations that don't sacrifice your health and don't significantly suppress your natural hormonal production. This way you're protecting yourself from abusing substances by setting a reasonable boundary for your supplementation protocol. Plus you won't build a reliance on these supplements, so you have the freedom to stop any time without significant withdrawal symptoms like you would have if you stopped injecting testosterone. And for me, this protocol is holistically healthier. See, in order to acquire my dream physique naturally, I had to engage in extreme destructive behaviors that ruined my physical and mental health, meticulously counting calories to the point that could be considered an eating disorder, destroying my metabolism and hormones just to achieve single digit body fat, and practicing antisocial behavior because I didn't want to miss my next meal or be tempted by alcohol that could disrupt my protein synthesis. At my peak physique, I actually felt my worst, both physically and mentally. And it wasn't sustainable. I restricted calories for years straight out of fear of losing my visible abs. And my body adapted by lowering its metabolism and its anabolic hormones such as testosterone, which made it much more difficult to stay lean. Now I can embrace the Natty Plus protocol and maintain a physique comparable to my prime year round and I don't count a single calorie these days. I work out in a shitty apartment gym and I still get to enjoy life and party. So now it is finally time to be completely transparent and reveal these Natty Plus supplements that I've been taking. If you want more up-to-date info, go follow the Natty Plus protocol social media and check out the link in the bios for an elaboration on my protocol. So without further ado, first, Black Ox Testosterone Booster. This contains DHEA, a precursor to many different hormones in the body. It's banned by WADA, so many people will consider it unnatural. Now, Black Ox in combination with Blue Ox actually doubled my testosterone in less than two weeks, as illustrated by my blood work. Although, if you already have high testosterone, it will probably not provide you as big of a benefit. 3AD, this is a derivative of the hormone DHEA, but 3AD is more potent because it is more easily converted to testosterone and other androgens in the body. It's the world's strongest DSHEA compliant metabolite. It's patented and sold exclusively by Enhanced Labs. So that's probably why you have not heard about it before. Now, of course, MK677, I now take it from Swiss Chems. This is a growth hormone secretagogue that increases growth hormone by stimulating the ghrelin receptor. This increases your natural growth hormone production analogous to a testosterone booster increasing your natural testosterone production. But of course, many people would consider it unnatural. My blood work showed that this boosted my growth hormone by 1500%. Those are wild numbers. So the caveat is that growth hormone is secreted in pulses. So the second blood test most likely caught my GH at its peak. So the average increase in growth hormone was probably less than that, but it was still substantial. And now for the most unnatural drum roll, please. AC262. I take that from Swiss Chems as well. This is a selective androgen receptor modulator or a SARM that I began using a few months ago. AC262 appears to have a more potent and selective binding affinity for the androgen receptor than some other SARMs, which gives it one of, if not the best ratios of anabolic benefits to side effects. Now at high doses, this could be suppressive, so I'm currently experimenting with the maximum dosage I can take that still keeps my suppression minimal. Now, of course, I also take natural supplements as well that I stack with the Natty Plus supplements for a synergistic effect. Again, check out the Natty Plus social media and the Google Doc in the link tree to learn more. I hope this video provides you more context behind the Natty Plus movement. And I want to be clear that I am and will continue to be transparent about all the supplements that I'm taking. And yeah, it might not be the perfect protocol. It's definitely not 100% risk-free. But holistically, I think it's healthier, at least for me, because now I don't participate in obsessive compulsive bodybuilding behaviors. I'll be doing a lot of experiments in the future to perfect this protocol and we'll be revealing them and my blood work on the Natty Plus social media. The TikTok has been blowing up recently, so I suggest you start there. Let's get it to 10,000 followers today. We definitely could. It's getting close. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.